I don't know about you. Have you ever looked at yourself in a Ryanair toilet? Cubicle oh, mirror. Yeah. <laughs> like, awful. Awful. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Girls With Goals. I'm Denise Curtin and this is episode 112. We've only actually got a couple of episodes left as we count down to Christmas. And for one of the final episodes this year, I'm joined by January Winters. As your Instagram bio <laughs> so perfectly puts it, you're a model, presenter and tune spinner. Tune spinner, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd be quite reluctant to use the word DJ for the first while because I don't know. Oh, really? I don't yeah. know why. Yeah, I just I prefer tune spinner. I've heard you DJ. You're a DJ. 100%. Oh, thank you. Thank 100%. You. Uh, first thing I'm going to say to you, the name January Winters, yeah. like you're set for success with that name. <laughs> Everyone says it sounds like a porn star's name. <laughs> I get that. It is a bit, it's a bit it's well, porn star. Porn star, not porn star. It sounds like a famous name. That's what I okay. think anyway. Like in school where people are like, you're determined, like you're destined to be something cool. Do not you know really. what I mean? They just ask a lot of questions, I guess, because... Um, yeah, I think it's a kind of a talking point when you meet people straight away, but um, they would just ask like where to come from and I always kind of give them, it's a kind of not really an exciting story. It's, I need to make up something better. <laughs> so basically my brother was called, uh, he was going to be born in January and then I was, sorry, then he was a boy and then the next one was a boy and then I was the first girl. So they just gave it to me even though I was born in April. And then Minty, he was pointing at me after watching some historical TV show with someone on it called Araminta. And then he, the, the name Minty just stuck. Oh. And then they put that in the birth there. And then my mum's second name is Winter. So that's why it's Russell Wait, so or Winters. Yeah. So is Minty your real name? Yeah, yeah. It's on my passport. Okay, that is job. even cooler. <laughs> what the hell? Everyone thinks it's a fake Facebook name. It's not. It's Minty like Winters. <laughs> yeah. That is... I'm actually so sad. Why did I get the name Denise? Like, the Minty Winters and then January Winters. That is so cool. Yeah, because yeah. I'd say a lot of people are like, were you born in January? I'd say that's the... Yeah, so no, not <laughs> born in April. But, um, but yeah, it's mad because a lot of, like my whole family would call me Minty. They would never call me January. Um, and a lot of old school friends. I know when I've met people at different stages of my life, whether they call me January or whether they call me Minty. Okay. So yeah, it's a mix of both. I like it. I like it. Now, as Christmas is coming up, how are yes. you set? I haven't bought one single present. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really. My dad used to always go shopping on Christmas Eve. Mm. So I think I'm that kind of leaning gives towards me that kind of stress. <laughs> um, no, I'll do a bit probably next week or something. But um, yeah, I've got a lot of people to buy for. I've got loads of brothers and sisters. So I've got four brothers and a sister. Um, so there's like, we're just going to do Chris Kindle this year because buying for eight people is too. Yeah, it's stressful. stressful. We only got recently paid. So I'm like, I have no shopping done, nothing. Really? The thoughts of going into town gives me full blown stress. <laughs> like crowds, the heat, everything. I'm like, yeah. oh, but I keep putting it off. And then when you go online, you're just overwhelmed because there's way too much Do you stuff. shop online? I like, do. For presents? I would, yeah. yeah. But what happens to me is I fall down a wormhole of shopping for myself. Uh, yeah, yeah, I go on looking done. for like my sister and I'm like, but this is gorge for <laughs> yeah. me. So yeah, I fall into that problem a lot of the time. But yeah, yeah are you staying in Dublin for Christmas? Uh, yeah, staying in Dublin for Christmas and then hoping to get away for the period from just after Christmas till like mid-January or something. Um, just because I just sit around and eat loads of food and drink loads and I would just rather go away somewhere hot. Yeah, and <laughs> rightly so, beating those January blues because there's something yeah. about the month of January. I don't know, is it that everyone talk, talks about it being sad or is it just sad? Yeah. But everyone is moped around, everyone is poor, nobody knows what I they want to do. It's all a case of like, I need to start the gym, I need to shake this weight, you know. Yeah. So going away is definitely... Um, yeah, it's the Monday of the year. Yeah, it <laughs> truly, truly is. But it's a gorgeous name. Thank Made you. for a stunning name. See, I actually like Mondays and I like the month of January because it's like the new start of the year. You're like, okay, I'm doing everything good. I'm going to be great. I'm going to be super good at being a human. And then everything like December, November is like the weekend. It you is know what I mean? so true. Yeah. <laughs> and you just pig out. That's a good way of looking at it. I'm going to look at it that way. Now. <laughs> but yeah, most people coming up to Christmas or, you know, the average Joe Soap like myself, yeah. we get kind of a standard break for Christmas. But uh -huh. you've got an interesting career and you get to kind of like make your own schedule. You could say um, modeling. Would that be your first love out of out of the three? Um, yeah, I think it's kind of shifting at the moment towards more of um, DJing and presenting just because it's a bit more crack. Like I've modelled for so long. I've been modelling over 10 years and uh, I still love it and it's great. And I'm, I've got to meet so many like amazing people from it and being able to travel all over the world. But I, it's like anything you've done it for so long that I'm, yeah. I am 
happy to be moving on to other things, I guess. Yeah, and how did you first get into modeling? Were you scouted or did you um, put yourself forward? No, it took so long. Everyone has these amazing stories and they're like, I'm whisked away. And no, it took so long. I always wanted to be a model. And then was went into like competition, didn't get anywhere. Then went to loads of different agencies in Dublin and uh, didn't really get anywhere with that. And then was in an agency up north for a few years and just didn't really get any work. And then I got with an agency in Dublin and then from then it kind of started from then. But I wasn't, I was about 18 when I started, 17, okay. 18, yeah. But it's kind of like good to show that the perseverance as well got you. Got yeah, you relentless. <laughs> yeah, relentless. Relentless. Knocking on doors. It's but annoying it, people. It did get you through because now you've done so much in, in the modelling sphere. It's like when I was looking up some, like when I was researching you and I was creeping you yesterday and I was looking up all the stuff you've done, like you've done work with Armani and everything and yeah. all around Europe. <laughs> like what what's that been like? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's been a great way to get to see different countries and live there, not just as traveling there as a tourist, but to get to basically like plunk yourself into a country and get to explore it as if you live there. So yeah, I worked in London, Paris, Milan, Madrid. I worked in Istanbul for a bit, which is crazy. It was just, we just had this like millionaire's lifestyle, which was just absolutely not real life at all. So you just turn up to yachts, partying and <laughs> it's really yes. fun. Very little modeling done, but. And, and what would be your purpose for being over there? Would it be a, a catwalk shoot or a, a um, campaign? Or? Well, it would be to uh, get work as, so I'd go there for a, a couple of months at a time um, and stay in one country just because you can, uh, the earning possibilities are a lot higher in different places. And it's good to just shake things up because you can do, you can get, caught in a trap of just doing a lot of the same work over here in Ireland like it is such a small market and um, it's good to kind of push yourself out into different countries and just to see if you can get the work and it's also like just sunny and fun and a bit of crack to meet other people so that's really really cool and do you do you get nervous when it comes to like you know someone saying to you Istanbul is the place you need to go to next and live for a while do you have fear going by yourself or would you go in a group no I, I most of the time I'd gone by myself like I most of the time I travel is by myself. Um, but no, I love it. I would, I, I kind of would have always pushed my agency or uh, contacted agencies myself to come over and work over there um, just to go exploring, really. It's kind of an excuse to go traveling, I guess, yeah. more than working. <laughs> yeah, but it's cool then with the kind of career that you do do that, like, when you're over in a different country, you can then source your own work there. You're not like chained to a company or you're not yeah. chained to a desk, you know, which makes it really interesting. It is, but I kind of like recently, because I have a lot of time off during the year, like sporadic times, um, like I have the ability to go to different countries whenever I want, but also I'm quite trapped in the sense that for me now, uh, in the position that I'm in, for me just to go and live in London for a while, trying to do DJing or, you know, ra radio bits and pieces. It's just, I feel like it's nearly impossible because I have no, I have nothing to bring with me. I don't have a year doing this or a year doing that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel while I have a lot of free time during the year and I can go off, I feel like I can't really move countries as much as easily anymore, you know? Yeah, because you're trying to build maybe a portfolio or a brand for yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so that's obviously the kind of other side of it that we don't often see, yeah. you know. <laughs> Um, and then when it comes to, like you were saying, modelling in different countries, what is the international sphere like in modelling compared to the Irish one? Um, it's a lot tougher, a lot meaner. Um, there's a lot more competition. There's, If you're in Milan, there's castings and you might have five or six a day. They have to go trek around to you. They're uh, more concerned about your weight over there. They, You go to a casting, there might be over 100 girls just queuing all the way around. And um, But then... On the other side of that, there's also really fun things. You get to meet people from all over the world. Um, you get to live in other countries. There's also kind of a promoter kind of lifestyle over there where promoters would uh, uh, chat to girls and get them to come to the clubs and bring them out for dinners and then like bring them on holiday. So loads of girls go to Cannes in August because Milan's just down in, in August. So loads of people just go to Cannes just for a party. <laughs> So there's that, which you don't really get over in Ireland. No, like, that's just wild. So, but yeah. you were saying about weight. Is that still a thing? Like, or, like, I suppose, is that still a thing? Obviously, there's still yeah. such a kind of talk around that. But would you still be in a casting where they'd be like, you need to lose weight or you need to? Um, well, some people. So basically, I skimmed down loads before I was going to Milan. 
um, and got super skinny, but like in a, in a relatively healthy way. But it's always, you know, it's like being a dancer or a jockey. Like you have to, you know, maintain a standard. Um, but yeah, then I felt like when I kind of got back to being normal again, then people over here just kind of stopped booking me. Um, so yeah, it is something I do think about a lot. And I think modeling has definitely warped my brain in that sense, as in most people now want to have a bum and hips and that's like the last thing that I would want. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just because for modeling, you need to be up and down. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely is at the forefront, but also I don't really care anymore. At the same time, I'm not trying to get the jobs where it matters that I'm really skinny anymore. I, I've gone past that point of needing those jobs. You know yeah, what I mean? So. I know. And I like from the outset looking in, I feel like we're at such a turning point where like plus size modeling, stuff like that is becoming more accepted. But then again, I'm not in the industry. So it's hard yeah. to, to know exactly <clears throat> the inner workings because I suppose a lot of, you know, brands and stuff put forward what they want you to believe and what you want, what they want you to see. So yeah. yeah, it's kind of challenging almost sometimes to know whether or not they're being true to their word, you could almost yeah, say. Yeah, for sure. And they're definitely, yeah, I mean, there has been a definite shift, but nothing major has changed realistically, as far as I can tell. But I'm yeah. not in, I'm not as, as fully in the industry as I was, would have been a couple of years ago, you know, so. And do you think like, obviously there's such a, an amazing side to it that you got to live, the kind of lifestyle of the rich and famous, but do you think the kind of nastiness and the fixation on weight and stuff maybe kind of pulled you away a bit from... Yeah, I just kind of just don't want to have to do all that again. <laughs> I just yeah. I just don't want to have to skim down, worry what I look like. Even sometimes when I get flights early morning, so when you would turn up into a, do, a new country, the first thing you would have to do is get off the plane and go straight to the agency where you'd be measured, taken photographs of and put up on the website. So you really have to make sure you are in your best shape going over. But I don't know about you, have you ever looked at yourself in a Ryanair toilet, cubicle oh, mirror? Yeah. <laughs> Awful. Awful. You're just like, no, I have to go and do this. Um, and yeah, just sometimes when I'm on flights now, I just just don't want to have to do that all over again. So yeah, no, completely. It's it's and especially like I know you love to travel yourself, but it is the kind of fear as well that you've kind of only got your own back, you know, that kind yeah, of way. Yeah. And you're like, I have to like go out there and make an impression and and make a place for myself. So yeah, that yeah. does sound very difficult. <laughs> um when it comes to modeling as well, obviously, you know, confidence is key. Do you think that you need to be naturally confident to be a model? Um, I think it definitely helps like anything. I mean, if you're back in yourself and you're confident in yourself, it does really help. But a lot of models would have uh, like anybody, uh, like body confidence issues. And But I think it definitely helps if you're confident and you're smiley and you're happy when you're going in. The amount of models that I've met in different countries are just miserable because they're just starving a lot of the yeah. time. They're just really hungry and really grumpy. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the ones that work the most are the ones who have a good personality a lot of the time. Yeah. Because people don't want to work with someone who isn't sound, I think, at the end no, of the day. No, completely. completely. <laughs> like, I think if I was a casting agent, not that I yeah. have any experience, but you'd want someone who obviously, like, fits the bill, but is, is a nice person too. You don't want yeah. someone who hasn't eaten in days and is a witch when they come to set. You know, that's not yeah. what you want. Yeah, and someone who's just not going to get on with the rest of the crew. And so most of the time when you're working, you kind of, people build up relationships with these people. So you're working in different countries and you might like some of the jobs I've been on have been for weeks or carrying on for months. Like, you know, you'd have a job on a weekend every month or every weekend for three months or so. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, no one wants to work with someone who's not dead. No, I think. no. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. And now you're moving a good bit from the modeling, like you were saying, over to the tune spinning. Yeah. Um, to the DJing. Tell me, how did that come about? Uh, it's kind of a long time coming, really. Um, I've always been... Like, uh, I've always been so into music and my dad was in a band, so we always grew up around music and um, I've just always gone to festivals, just always, yeah, just always gone to club nights and just uh, had such an interest in music and all my friends growing up were DJs and I was kind of in that world already, but just never really had the kind of courage to go and do it. And then I think two years ago, I was just thought, do you know what, just do it now. If you're not gonna if you're not gonna do it now, you're just not gonna do it. So um a friend of mine, um Jack Thompson helped me buy a set of decks and then uh yeah, I've just been trying to play ever since so And did you then self like did you teach yourself then how to DJ or pretty much. Yeah. I mean I definitely took help from a lot of people. Um 
like a few like one guy Papa Lou helped me out uh, James Crowan helped me out um just like asking people who are DJs what do they do and how do they do things you know um and yeah but I think most of it is just learning on the job when you're there yeah so well yeah. that's what I've been doing anyway. no <laughs> you're like oh shit um yeah, no that's not what I should say <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah I used to present um on a radio station uh for a couple of years as well okay. and like that when I first started out, oh my God, the mistakes I used to make, I was like, this is unnatural, you know, but I was on a really crazy shift. I think I used to do like 5am to 6am, which was oh, like whoa. nobody's actual time slot. I used yeah. to just come in and like play around and practice yeah, like yeah. the art almost of it before I then got, you know, like a, a nice standard slot where people are actually listening and like that. But I think although you kind of go in with a, a set of skills, a lot of it then is due to kind of what you pick up once you're, yeah. once you're behind the decks and stuff like and that. And just knowing what to play at, at events and things. Um, that takes a while. That's going to take years to kind of perfect. But and also just having a lot of the confidence, a lot of the DJs I would go and see would just drop such a random track in that's some salsa music in the middle of techno <laughs> and but everyone I think it's just because they have so much confidence that they know that people are going to enjoy it yeah and trust it I think that's what I would I need more of yeah and when you say about the right music to play what do you mean do you mean like based on the event you're at yeah based on the event so I mean like a lot of things aren't going to work for really heavy music or if it's a an early morning coffee thing or something you know what I mean it's not gonna yeah. work. like the, the same music doesn't work for everything so um yeah I guess it's about like reading the room and figuring out what to play I guess yeah and then you have done loads of cool events so far as a DJ I you were at the Schweppes um pop-up on yeah. Dawson Street recently in Dublin that's that very very cool very fun yeah and then you also I saw you at Little Woods I think that's the one that I remember seeing you oh, at. Yeah. you were DJing at Little Woods um what's it like getting these gigs is it a, is it a sense of putting yourself out there and seeing what comes back or yeah it's actually mad it's one of the only things that's been happening quickly in my life nothing else has happened this quickly before but yeah I basically started DJing and then um I don't know I guess when other people hear you and other people recommend you then um, people just want you to play as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what's great now is that I'm getting good bookings in, you know, proper music venues like the Button Factory and things like that. Um, so I want to get more of those kind of bookings. But um, yeah, I guess it's just people just hearing you and, and thinking that, that they want to book you again. Yeah. I guess. yeah. So what do you think the goal is? Would it be selling out a, a, a venue for and like of people dancing and like actually like a club night or would it yeah. be yeah do you think I don't know I see I get such bad nerves even like yeah I get such bad nerves before I DJ okay so like when I played the button factory recently I was just such bad nerves that um it's hard to think about those things of what I would really like to do because the nerves like when you mentioned that to me I'm like oh my god no 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 I don't want to do that at all yeah um but I'd love to play some international festivals yeah that I'd would love be to so see that. cool yeah yeah that would be fun yeah um and yeah play more festivals over here I want to do the festival circuit this this summer so I'm kind of I want to be good enough for all that and then I want to play some international festivals as well maybe yeah, I think I could see you in the festival circuit, definitely. Like, yeah. it, it's, it, you're, you <laughs> kind of have the aesthetic almost to kind of play, like, cool things like that because of the events you've been doing in uh, Dublin have been very, very cool themselves. Do you think you have a career highlight so far from all the work that you've been doing? Um, in terms of what work? Everything. Everything. Modelling, DJing. I don't know if I have, like, number one highlight. More just... I know there's been good days, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, supporting Marby State and the Button Factory was pretty cool because yeah. I listened to their music for so long and getting to support them, which was also my first ever support act. Um, that was pretty cool. Uh, modeling wise, I guess, just collectively getting to travel all over the place um, and just meeting loads of same people. Yeah. And do so. you keep in contact with all your modeling friends or is it like, would you ever organize meetups? Like, I know you probably have them from all over Europe, but is it is it something that you keep in touch even when campaigns and shoots and stuff like that are over? Yeah, it's yeah. actually mad because so a friend, a girl that I met in Milan years ago, we kept in touch on Instagram and everything else. 
and she was from Washington and we hung out in Milan a bit and then just kept in touch. And then she came over to Dublin and then we started hanging out loads. And now she's Miss Universe Ireland. So she came over here for the competition and I'd met her in Milan years ago. So that's, um, yeah, I do keep up in touch with people. Oh my God, that's outrageous. Isn't it? That is so cool. So much. Did you ever do pageants back in the day? No. No. No, never did any. Never for it? Uh, I just don't know if they're for me. Yeah. Do you know, I, I, think, I think that they do have a place, but I just don't know if my place is in them. Yeah. <laughs> I so get you. Um, and then when it comes to working for yourself, yeah. um, how do you find that? So hard. Yeah. I'm so bad. I'm always wondering why I'm broke. And then I just realised that I haven't sent any invoices in. And I just am so bad at it. Um, but I guess I've been doing it for so long now that you have to get up in the morning and have to motivate yourself to do everything. Um, like I've pretty much been working for myself since I was about 18, 19, you know. Um, but I guess... I'm also really bad at getting up in the mornings, but um, yeah, it is hard. It's really hard, yeah. but I guess it just always works out. And then what, like, what's your timetable as of such, or do you have one? Because you've been doing it for so long. Like, do you just think, okay, like Mondays and Tuesdays, if I don't have a booking, I'm going to like sit and do admin or like Tuesday, like Wednesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to like try and get a modeling gig. Like, is yeah. it, is it? No, I have no consistency whatsoever. Yeah. I have no schedule. I have no plan. Yeah. It's just basically whatever comes. I say, this is today. I have a gig later on this evening. I have another gig on Sunday. Um, I might have something else. I can't remember what else I have now. Yeah. We've just sorted that out. Um, but yeah, every week is different. Every day is different. And things come in last minute a lot of the time. Um, and yeah, you just basically have to squeeze it all in. And then also somehow find time to go to the gym, which I haven't been in about two months which I still pay for um, and try and, you know, bring my dogs for a walk and also just have time to relax and chill out and eat and just do nice things and hang out with friends. So, yeah, it is hard to, I need more of a schedule, I think, but it's nearly impossible to organise. It's trying to find that balance almost, isn't it? Yeah. Between like having work, because even I know, like I'm in a technically nine to five job yeah. and like that, I even find it's so difficult to have the balance with working. And yeah. eating and sleeping and like like you said going to the gym I've paid gym membership for months on <laughs> end and I'd say I've gone twice you yeah, know and like, exactly. like that I'm like I'm going to do the yoga that they have every Tuesday and I'd say I've gone <laughs> once in like nine months but um when it comes then to like you know when you're booking work and you've got like great weeks and great days like you were saying mm. is there a lot of stress when maybe a week passes and you're doing nothing or does that ever happen? I mean I've been quite lucky that I've been working consistently for quite a long time so I'm normally things are going to come in for me um, and if not if I do get that sense of I mean it does happen a lot where I think what am I doing with my life yeah um but I guess you just have to go and hustle and just contact people about work or you know maybe I need to call the agency and get them to push for me for jobs or maybe I need to send out DJ things or you know you kind yeah. of just have to hustle a bit more in those times I mean I should hustle more all the time but I you know yeah, <laughs> I think most people that I talk to as well that are, you know, freelance and working for themselves, they say a lot of the issue is trying to find a time to actually say, like, my day is done. Do you find yeah. that issue too? Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm, I'm better at working later in the evening than I am in the morning. Yeah. Um, I'm always just quite sleepy. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, I kind of, I don't mind staying up late and doing work. Um, but... Yeah, even as well, I don't really have weekends because I, I DJ a lot on the weekends, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and if you get a booking in, how much notice do you usually get? Like, um, it can really depend. I mean, you can get something booked in weeks in advance or something could just come in and I have to go there tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, see, I'd find that really stressful then as well. I don't know if it's just me because I love everything organised with weeks notice. Oh, but really? Do you find, like, like if you were, like, planning to go away or something, like, do you need to kind of, like, clear that with, like, a lot of people or, like... Because yeah. I feel like, do you kick yourself sometimes if you've organised to go away or something and something good comes in? Yeah. Yeah, it's happened so many times. Like, even the other weekend, I was supposed to go to Prague for my friend's birthday and 
I had a job come in for the Monday. I was supposed to go for the weekend. And then another thing came in for the Friday. And then I thought, OK, well, I've only booked the flight so far. So I'll just, you know, leave them. And then the other job got booked or the other job got cancelled on the Monday. So then I was thinking, oh, maybe I could get a later flight. And I, la I waited to the last minute and then the other job got cancelled. So then I could go. So I didn't know I was going to Prague until the day before. But I guess you just <laughs> see you're not. I'm thinking about actually that. freaking out <sighs> thinking about that. The cancelling now, I'd actually kill someone. Like really? I genuinely would kill someone. I'd be like, but I have made my plans yeah. to do this for you. You know, and also I'd be thinking of the money, you know, being, yeah. you know, bluntly honest. Like I, I'd be thinking, I thought I had 600 euro this weekend and now you're telling me I have zero and I can go away again and you know yeah but I guess when the when the jobs come in you just have to take them yeah so, you know and I think a lot of kind of freelancers might be the same as that but I also probably should put my foot down a bit more and say no I've booked this and I'm not going know. you know I'm not gonna stay here for whatever job but then something good comes in you're like oh, and it's part of the hustle as well you know <laughs> yeah. you're just kind of like suck it in but like yeah. that it would just when you tell me about that I'm like oh my god <laughs> I'm almost bullying thinking of how angry that would make me I'm like <laughs> no I don't mind it I like that kind of um I don't enjoy the stress of it because it stresses yeah. a lot of other people out it's more other people who stress me out about it they want to okay. know if I'm going they want to know if they need to book things and I, I understand that that is stressful for other people yeah but not really for me. <laughs> okay, well then you're in the perfect career for that yeah. because I would be... I would Maybe be, I'm just used to it. I would Maybe be the friend. Really I'd be it. like, let me know, please, <laughs> before I combust. Um, and then you were saying about the invoices as well. Is that yeah. a difficult game? I just find it hard. I just don't enjoy doing that stuff. Yeah. So I don't want to sit down and do it. Do you know? So no, completely. I just don't do it. And then it gets to the stage where I forgot to ask for all the money that's owed to me. Uh, people pay on time, to be honest. People are normally pretty good at it. Okay, but that's I... probably the first time I've heard <laughs> that invoicing works, which is great to hear because a lot of the time I think we hear, you know, like, I've been waiting nine months to be no, paid. No, I've been pretty okay. Euro. Okay. Yeah, it's me. It's me not giving the people the invoices, which is the problem. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then um, upcoming projects, where are we going to see you soon? Or are we? Or is it more hustle, more invoices? Um, yeah, I guess I want to, I would like to DJ more. I want to kind of perfect uh, that kind of side of things. I just want to get better at it. And um, I'd like to do some more presenting. I'm in RT Pulse at the moment and I do another show on Dublin Digital Radio. So uh, they just did a big fundraiser to get a new studio going. So that's going to be in... Um, the centre of town more. So, um, okay, cool. so yeah, it's going to be a brand new studio. And uh, yeah, I have a show, a monthly show on there, which I'm doing tomorrow. And then, so yeah, I just want to concentrate on more radio things and more DJ things, I guess. Yeah. And, and, and uh, then yeah, what hustling. kind of music do you do on the show? Um, on that show, well, so they're, they're both different shows. One show I have is, it's called Point of Tune. So it's um, a monthly themed radio show that basically picks a theme and explores it. So one of them would be uh, sunshine so it's a lot of songs related about sunshine or longing for love and all the songs are like about longing for love and uh, missing someone and, and that kind of thing and then the one on um, RT Pulse is all dance music okay um, cool. so yeah dance and disco and house and techno and that kind of stuff. You get a nice array then like especially mm. when it comes to you know your DJ gigs then you're kind of exposed to such different channels of music that's yeah. really really cool well, I think I've it? always been like that I don't think people really listen to um one type of music yeah. and I, I don't think yeah so it's it's nice to have the show on TV or to be able to play whatever I want mm -hmm. and make it somehow filter into this uh theme but then on RT Pulse um I mean the, some songs just wouldn't work on that yeah do you know so yeah. it's different it's about yeah. kind of figuring out like the DJing what works where exactly yeah um and then lastly resolutions for next year do you have any or is there anything that you're I like I haven't even finished the ones for this year yet yeah. I I think <laughs> I quit mine in January but really yeah yeah I don't really do resolutions I'm, I do more kind of things that I want to do throughout the year but most of them I did make a plan last year that I wanted to go well watching in Kerry Wait, what? Go well watching and well watching. I thought you said well watching. Well watching. Well, I've <laughs> looking down a well or something. Oh no, I no, that's no, what no. You're don't I said <laughs> well watching. Okay, okay, cool. In Kerry. Yes, yeah, so I'd love to do that, which I didn't do last year. And um, so that'll be back on the list. A lot of things are going back on the list. I need to be more organised. I need to be better at invoicing. I want to DJ more. I want to do more radio. I want to. Um, hang out with more animals. <laughs> so, yeah. That's really <laughs> awesome. Wow. <laughs>
<laughs> I love that. Hang out with more animals. Yeah, yes. that's really all I want to do most of the time. So. Well, that's so cute. Yeah. Well, it was absolutely fantastic to have you on. And uh, yeah, I think you have um, a lot that's coming and I can see it. I think I we're going to so, see, see, yeah, <laughs> see your name in lights, January Winters. It's a name that's set for success anyway. So yeah, if people want to catch where you are, where can they do so? Um, so they can get me on Instagram at January Winters and catch one of the shows on RTE Pulse. That's from two to four on Thursday and then the show on Dublin Digital Radio as well goes out monthly so amazing thank you so much for coming on thank you um, next week's show is going to be from a really secret amazing um, yeah private location that we can't we can't divulge yet but um, yeah it's going to be really really <laughs> exciting it's our Christmas show making it seem a lot better than it is me and Eve Mara are going to be presenting that one straight from Santa's Kingdom basically so yeah that'll be very exciting of course like always if you are loving the show please do subscribe please like share tell your friends all of those things because it really does help and we'll see you again next week Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo!